Hi everyone. So sorry for the clickbaity title, but I um, I want to address something. I just recently read an article, and I see periodically I see articles um, about professional cuddling about someone who tries professional cuddling, and it was very negative, which that's fine. That can happen. Um, but here's the thing. Whenever I see an article that depicts professional cuddling as horrible, there seems to be one major through line in, and I also see this in like personal requests that people give me. So if you are wanting to become a professional cuddler because you think it's easy, quick money, don't do it. Don't do it. You are going to hurt yourself and you're going to hurt someone else. I don't do this work for the money. I have to take money in order to do this work. It is important. It is taxing. It is so rewarding. And if it was just the money, I would do something else in a heartbeat. When people hear professional cuddling, I feel like the image that comes up is two people spooting on a couch, not talking. That's what I feel like people picture. And that isn't one tenth of what this work actually is. People who, uh, and oftentimes a really good measure of someone who takes this work seriously is whether or not they've gotten certification. Not always, but often. So programs like Cuddleist, which is who I am with. There's also a uh, Samantha Hess runs Cuddle Up to Me, and I know that there's at least a f certification program and a support system there. So those people, the people who are taking time to really think about this and address this and engage in this work as a therapeutic practice, know that no one is paying us to be a body pillow. That's not why people are paying us. People are not paying us to be a heated body pillow. People pay us to create a sense of safety, a sense of security, and a sense of unconditional positive regard so that they can access the intimacy that comes with platonic touch. Intimacy is vulnerable. Intimacy is scary. Intimacy uh, in order to engage in platonic intimacy in a healthy way, in a responsible way, you have to have exquisite boundaries and communication and consent communication. You have to know those things. Otherwise, you're going to endanger yourself and you're going to endanger a client. My clients don't pay for me to say yes. They don't pay for me to be a heated body pillow. They pay for me to show them how to honor their own yes and no. And I have to be able to do that. I have to have strong boundaries. I have to be able to say no. I have to be able to make sure that I am putting myself in a healthy and safe position so that I can create that for them. I have to be the expert on that. Otherwise, I'm creating an unsafe environment for them and for myself. So if anyone is coming to this work thinking, if you have done Google research, like a Google search on quick ways to make money at home, if you have Googled what are the five most lucrative in-home jobs, what are the five things that you can do today to make the most money, I know professional cuddling shows up on those lists. I know it does because I've seen them. People link them to me all the time. And if you find and come to professional cuddling through one of those lists, don't do it. Don't be a professional cuddler because you're going to hurt yourself and you're going to hurt other people. When should you be a professional cuddler? You should be a professional cuddler if you love people. 
You should be a professional cuddler if you are willing and excited about doing the internal personal work it takes to hold strong boundaries and communicate only enthusiastic consent and never settle for less. The only time you should become a professional cuddler and put yourself into that therapeutic practice in the position of an expert to create safe environments for other people to feel vulnerable and intimate in is if you feel like that is what you are meant to do. Is that if you feel like you actually are called to that, otherwise you're going to be miserable. It is going to be taxing. It won't be rewarding because for me with this work, I, I love it so much. I love the people who I get to help. I love seeing how I get to impact their lives. It is an honor. It is a privilege and it is work. And I love every minute of it. And like I said before, I don't do this for the money. I have to take money in order to do this. Because it's a fact of life. We live in a capitalist society. If I don't take money, I don't have rent. If I, and can't pay my bills. And can't, like, if I can't live happily and healthily, then I can't support anybody else. I can't give myself to anyone else if I'm not supported. It's like put the oxygen mask on yourself before you put it on anyone else. That's like the essence of this work. So yes, I have to charge. I have to value myself enough to charge so that I can keep doing it. So that I can be supported. So that I can keep giving support to other people. This is a long rant, but this article that I read, it tore my heart out. Because this person was assaulted and I don't... I. I am never going to blame a victim. Never. I have been assaulted. I have a trauma history. And it is not ever the victim's fault. But I don't want anyone to ever put themselves into a position by thinking professional cuddling is going to be easy and it's you're not going to be put in a position where you have to know your boundaries inside and out. You have to be able to communicate those inside and out. The myth of the customer is always right. We are fighting that myth every day because the customer is not paying me to be right. The customer is paying me to model healthy boundaries and create a safe space. And a space, safe space cannot be created if I'm not being honest with that client. If I'm being, if I am ever uncomfortable and I don't tell the client, I have failed them. So it's not, it's not my responsibility to, to be a yes person to a client. It's my responsibility to model good boundaries and good behavior and to show that to them so that they can do that and they can open up all the wonderful things in, in life that open up when you have those things. And I can teach that to them and help them through that. Or if they don't want to learn that, that's okay. They simply have to respect it from me and then they can still access that touch in a way that both of us are healthy and safe. And the way I was able to do that was through extensive training. So that that's my video today. It's if do not become a professional cuddler if you think it's going to be quick, easy money. Because you because oh, you're going to put yourself and other people in danger. Don't do that. <laughs> Don't do it. Only do this if your heart is in it and you've spent so much time. And I and I don't want it to be I'm rambling a little bit, but I don't want this work to be exclus exclusive, exclusionary. That's not a word, but you know what I'm saying. Um, I want it to be accessible. It's also not for everybody. So keep that in mind. All right. Have a good day. Get all your touch needs met. Be brave. Be courageous. Be vulnerable. Have a great day.